<laughs> a lot of you niggas is Virgil. Well, not not the people in the. I take that back. Not the people here in the chat room. Not the people listening live. Not the people listening to the replay. But everybody listening know a Virgil. Y'all know these motherfuckers at a turn and y'all share the same program to them. They be like, what's that hotel shit? We just need to come together. Them niggas is Virgil. The Million Dollar Man's bodyguard. For those who didn't watch wrestling, Virgil was the motherfucker that every time Million Dollar Man would get into something, Virgil was always right there. Virgil used to be the one picking up the money. He was a do-boy. Virgil was Million Dollar Man's do-boy. He was dressed right, you know what I mean? He looked the part. He had the fresh clothes. You know, Virgil was somebody who, you know, he had the fancy car. Y'all remember Virgil? Y'all remember Virgil? This is you niggas sitting there with your bow tie. Y'all know these niggas. Scared, kind of pussyfooting around with their language, around their white friends. You know, they the ones that come to your Facebook page, your, your Instagram page, and when you on some black first shit, they like, yeah, nigga, yeah, motherfucker, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. Shit, fuck these whites. And then you look at their own page, they say something, and the minute they white co-worker say something, oh, no, I'm, no, Jim, that's not what I meant. Oh, no, 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 you, no, no, you, you just have to understand, that's not what, that's not what, that's not what, then you be on the page like, oh, you, you, you just gonna let this, this motherfucker talk like that? Nah, man, we, we, we cool, man, we go back. He don't, he don't really act like that. He don't really act like that. You niggas is Virgil. Terry, you right, Hank Watts, Terry Crews. Leonard Thompson, Virgil look like Willie D. He do. Virgil really do look like Willie D, though. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Virgil does look like Willie D. <laughs> hey, Brother Love was the shit, though. I love you. <laughs> I used to love Brother Love. We are here at the WWF. Saturday morning, superstars. I have with you the million dollar man. I love you. <laughs> man, I love it. The 80s wrestling was the shit, boy. Fuck what you heard. 80s wrestling through the early 90s, that was the shit. But yeah, but let's break this down though. We gonna get to talking about, cause this is gonna be a perfect segue into what we talking about next. Like this shit, share, and subscribe. Y'all know, I'll be on top of the dome. That's why I'm over here. But the shit always comes in. I always try to bring, not try to, I always bring whatever we talking back full circle. It's a learning lesson in everything we observe. The whole point of observing life is to learn, not to get involved. Do not get in other people's play. Don't get in other people's story. Everybody got their own play in this motherfucking life. You got yours. Observe this shit, then get back to your own reality. But within those observations, it's life lessons we all can get some game from. And if you have a problem dissecting the game, that's what I'm here for, to help you dissect the game. Learn from the shit and grow and get better. That's all this shit's about. I ain't perfect, ain't none of us perfect. We just trying to get better in this motherfucker. So like Virgil, he is the person that keeps white supremacy, racism, capitalism, all the isms intact. Because the billion dollar man themselves can't win. If you remember Ted DiBiase's character, he was never the best wrestler. Ted DiBiase, for the most part, got his ass whooped all match. When it was ahead of Faye, well, whoever he was wrestling, 
Ted DiBiase always was getting whooped. We can also use Ric Flair as an example. Get your ass whooped the whole fight. And when it's time, how did, how did Ted DiBiase get ahead in his wrestling matches? He'd do some cheating shit. He'd have Virgil right there. He'd be getting his ass whooped, and then Virgil be outside the ropes. And then the minute the referee turned his head, Virgil come up in the ring and beat up on the wrestler who's winning the fight and then get out the ring and then Ted DiBiase get back to working on him. No different than in real life. These punk thug, wealthy, rich motherfuckers can't, can't fuck with us. They can't fuck with the people. So they pay niggas, Negroes, coons, sellouts, whole ass motherfuckers pennies to them but more pennies than these niggas have ever seen and these dumb motherfuckers are the safeguards for the systems that oppress all of us all of this shit played out on wrestling right in front of us as kids you dig all this shit played out right in front of us as children These wealthy, rich motherfuckers, they can't fuck with us. They're not smart. They're not intelligent. They're not good. They're not better. But they do have something that they make sure we don't have, and that's a lot of money. And they use that money to pay others to protect them. And when a person finally beat up Virgil, then beat up the Million Dollar Man, and it's time to finish them off. What do the person do? They have compassion. Just like the people. They take their foot off the gas. And the minute they take their foot off the gas, what did the million dollar man do? Kick him in the nuts. And then win the match. No different than society, folks. It's the same shit played out over and over and over again. So when we talking about this whole situation with the people bankrupting, not bankrupting, but making them lose five and a half billion dollars, you see them lose their shit. The playing field ain't even equal. It's just got tipped a quarter of an inch out of their favor. And look how much they bitch, moan, and cry. What if all the people decided, okay, we're not gonna pay our bills. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not going to participate in this system at all for two weeks. What do you think humanity can get out of that? When you have 500 families controlling like 60% of the, 70% of the world's wealth. What if the other 7.7 .7 billion people on this earth decided not to play the game anymore? What if people decide to understand the system for what it is, see the cracks and creases in the system, and manipulate those cracks and creases? What could we get out of these punk thugs, sorry motherfuckers, if we did that? Think about that for a second. That's why I'm always talking about learning systems. If you're going to participate in a system, whatever system that is, learn the system. Don't just do what, don't just be dictated to. You're not no fucking computer. You're human. Don't just be dictated to. Don't let these thugs just tell us you can only vote blue, you can only vote red, you can only do this. No. I'm going to pick up the same motherfucking book you read. 
And if I can't find the book you read, I'm going to find a book close to it. I'm going to find somebody who used to work in that industry and I'm going to listen to what they got to say. I'm going to figure this shit out myself. I swear to God, black people, we are the, our own solution. They can't hold us back if we just value what we what we have. If we just value what we have, if we value ourselves, if we value ourselves, if we value ourselves, well, God damn it, let me say that one more time. If we value ourselves, there's nothing white supremacy can do to stop anything that we do. White supremacy needs us in order to stay alive. White supremacy needs us in order to stay alive. Let me say that again. White supremacy needs us to stay alive. White supremacy needs Virgil. White supremacy needs Virgil to stay alive. Stop. Remove the Virgils from white supremacy. It dies on its own. You don't have to pull out the guns, you niggas that's talking about you. We don't have the guns that they have. <clears throat> but we don't need them. They'll turn them guns on themselves if you just get the fuck out the way. 